Yo, what's up guys, Bajiri here. Got a little gym video for you guys, and I know it's been a while since we've been posting like fitness content on the main channel, but I assure you we have been kicking butt every day on the gym stream at twitch.tv slash Bajira. Usually starting around 7 or 8 a.m. PST, depending on how the schedule's going. Um, but we also have been posting those workouts on a new Bajira Gains YouTube channel as well, so if you enjoy the fitness content, be sure to follow the stream and be sure to follow along on that Bajira Gains channel. Link will be in the description of the videos. But I wanted to post this on the main channel just for fun to see how, uh, see how the fitness content is doing on the main channel. Um, all in all, training's been going good, been working hard. It's been a situation where we recovered from the 2018 comp season and then had Archer in 2019. Then have been working hard and got rank one in WoW in 2020. Finished off the year with like a little bit of a mini cut in 2020. But I feel like we did sort of hit our stride with the gains about halfway through 2020 and been continuing that on until this year, 2022, which is already in March, halfway through March, which is insane. Um, but training's going good. I feel like right now we're in a nice little bulk, nice little surplus, eating probably around 4,000 calories a day. Um, which is plenty of food <laughs> Sometimes I'll even do cardio in the evenings just to make that food go down a little bit easier kind of ramp up the um, Not the metabolism necessarily, but just like my appetite a little bit and even though cardio during a bulk can be kind of productive A lot of what I'm doing with my training is just working out in a way that I enjoy and having it all make sense to me um, And I so I think like you know 30 40 minutes of light like super light cardio at the end of the day It's just kind of nice just feels good so I've been doing that, it also, like I said, makes eating a little bit easier, so that's been good, enjoying the work. Now for this workout in particular, um, probably not too hard to tell what we're training this day, it's a good old leg day, and my leg days, for the most part, have still been anchored by squats, you'll see us doing a little bit of like uh, hex bar deadlifts or straight legged deadlifts near the end of the workout, um, but one of the things that's changed is, well two things is that I've been using a safety squat bar primarily for my squat work, which is really fun for me. I, I like that a lot. I feel like squats, the most annoying thing about squats for a long time was how much pressure it put on your elbows and your shoulders. Because Especially for me, I like to do like a lower bar squat. And that was always a big pain to like crank your shoulders and, and arms back to get in position. And like my squat is already kind of like like wonky anyway like I, I kind of dip to the left side but my whole left side is kind of wonky <laughs> like my left elbow shoulder all that stuff is just jacked up it's not, it's not like injured it's not like painful it's just like just weird like I, I've got some curvature in my spine and maybe I'll just blame it on that just let it roll but anyway the the safety squat bar has been feeling great uh, I think it does pitch you forward a little bit but I feel like I kind of put my butt back and lean forward a little bit more anyway on a squat so it kind of ends up feeling fine I've been taking it pretty easy on the actual weights that I'm lifting I feel like this workout we probably went up to like 250 and that was it I think which is not very heavy but um, we've gone up to like, like maybe mid 300s on the safety squat bar and that's fine but I think the focus that I have right now for me is just getting things to feel good and getting good activation and uh, speaking of activation, another fun thing that we got that you probably saw in a clip just a second ago was we did get a, uh, a quad extension and hamstring curl isolation machine. And that thing has been super fun just to get some pumpage. And now it's, once again, it's kind of a weird thing about the way that I tend to train is uh, I'll actually do those isolation movements in between sets of squats, which probably contributes to additional fatigue for the squat but it also really helps me get into uh, the quads for the squat and then uh, hamstrings. I'll do the I'll do quads first, then I'll do hamstrings like the second half of the workout. So that'll be really fun with the hex work that we're doing with like straight legged deadlifts as well to get into them hamstrings and then gluteys, which is great. So starting off with the quads and then hamstrings later on is pretty fun. And I've been doing that with uh, calf raises in between pretty much every set and so I, I don't really take any sort of like real rest time necessarily. I'm kind of just moving between sets. So I'm resting from squats while I'm doing the quads and the calves, but I'm still kind of staying moving the whole workout, which for me kind of keeps me in the workout and, and is fun that way too.
And I feel like that fits into my overall sort of training philosophy for the moment, which is we are in an off-season where I intend to make some gains. Definitely want to put in some good food and work hard in the gym and try to progress. Um, but all in all, like my training has been up till now and probably will still continue to be forever. Mostly about kind of just enjoying it, man. Like I go in and I train and I have fun with it. And I feel like the, tr the way that I train is probably not optimal for just pure gains. But it's a style of training that allows me some freedom. And it is the style of training that allows me to look forward to my training and enjoy it while we're at it. So that's pretty much always been the, the main thing. I, I love to work out and I try to work out in a way that's fun. So if keeping the, the pump roll in the whole workout kind of detracts from my ability to lift the most weight, which may inhibit my progressive overload and it may inhibit some of my gains. I don't know. It's just kind of part of the fun. I feel like the main reason I train is because I like it and the gains are kind of like a positive side effect. But at the same time, if you really enjoy something and you put a lot of time into it, you want to get better at it. And because I, I do enjoy competing, you know, improvement and having a good physique is kind of part of the deal for sure. But if a training style is potentially suboptimal, but a lot more enjoyable. I think that's worthwhile, for me at least. So, I mean, it's not to say that we're not making gains. Like, we, we still are able to progressive overload, still able to get strong over time, uh, still able to build some muscle. I feel like, for me, it's, it's tough to tell if we're making gains sometimes. Um, and the weight is kind of like one of those ways where you can say, okay, well, it's hard to tell in the mirror if my legs are actually getting bigger, but if your squat is improving, that's kind of a fun way to tell that you're making progress, which is kind of like the opposite of the way it works when you're dieting. Like in a bulk, it's like, it's hard to tell, right? Because you got a little extra fat on you probably, at least for me, I know I do. Uh, I don't try to stay real lean when I'm bulking, but it's kind of nice to, to see the progress in the weights, right? Whereas with dieting, it's like, it's almost like Christmas morning every morning, especially when you're like in the groove and you can, it's, it's almost like you can see new detail like every day, right? Even if you're not really dieting, you're losing weight that fast. It's just like, you're always excited to see like, ooh, do I, do I have a little bit more definition today? Whereas with bulking, it's like, okay, I mean, we're gonna have to spend a year trying to gain a couple pounds of muscle, right? So it's a little bit different in terms of what keeps you excited for training. So the bulking for me is like, what keeps me excited for training is just that it feels good and that it's fun. And, it, and it's definitely the case when you're putting in as much food as I am, but I feel like the food that I'm eating right now is like, I'm, I, my diet's like, good like I'm eating good food and I don't think I'm like having to shove it down too much but the cardio like I said helps kind of keep you feeling feeling good but this workout in particular is a day where we're not going real heavy on the weights like I said it's a it's a day where I'm letting the weight do what I call sink it in let that weight sink in so when I'm squatting um, instead of you know falling into the bottom of the squat and then trying to power out of it real fast uh, I'm, I'm going down a little bit more slowly and letting all the all the activation occur throughout the whole movement really like we're still trying to move that weight up <laughs> but on a lot of these reps especially on these kind of like mid-range things where it weighs about this is like a 200 pound squat here which is a little bit less than my body weight we're breaking at the knee and getting my butt back and letting it sit on my hips and hamstrings on the way down and letting that weight kind of just activate the legs on the way down see we're not just falling into the hole there I mean, you want to have the weight under control but um letting it sink into the legs is one of those feelings that i'm enjoying especially with the safety squat bar right because i feel like the safety squat bar should put a little bit more of the focus into your quads but for me in the way i squat it still does definitely get into my hamstrings and glutes quite a bit and that feels pretty good that being said, I feel like when I do a squat well and when I feel strong with the squat, it's mostly just like sitting back a little bit and letting the weight sink into my, like the back of my legs for sure. But a lot of it's just core. Like when I'm at my strongest, I feel like I'm just flexing my abs and then the weight just moves, which is pretty interesting. I feel like that is why I like low bar squat better with the normal barbell. And even though the safety squat bar pushes you forward a little bit at the top, I feel like being able to do that with this bar is also definitely a possibility. Like, I just gotta build familiarity with the bar, which I've been using this bar for a while. Um, 
but I also have to probably get my core used to that too. And I, and I feel like, aesthetically at least, my core is kind of a strong part of my physique, and I feel like my core has been fairly strong in general. But I do use the belt a lot, which I which I enjoy. Um, I don't think that's making my core weaker necessarily. I just think that we just still got to get stronger on that. I feel like a lot of what I'm doing still is like trying to build back up some strength and some form and just get everything feeling good because that 2018 diet I mean it's crazy that I'm still talking about it that was no joke man it took a while to recover from that and with Archer uh, in 2019 I mean like we weren't getting any sleep for like seven months <laughs> so we were in the gym working but it wasn't really like a progressive time you know like it wasn't like getting better during that time I feel like um, <clears throat> But once again, that's that's where the gym, for me, is a place where I am looking to improve. But it's also a place that just kind of helps tie everything together. Especially during the wintertime, man. Wintertime sucks for me. It's real easy to get like down in the dumps during the winter, even when things are going good. And that's something that we've been dealing with a little bit. It, it, it felt like it didn't really hit very hard. It, didn't, it wasn't really as bad until just recently. So we've been using the gym as a tool to kind of stay consistent and stay in rhythm and just have everything else kind of stay in balance which is not uncommon for me i'm also very grateful that we've got that gym in the garage because things have just been different you know with uh the pandemic and whatnot but that's another reason why i'm super grateful for this setup man we're able to kind of get our work in every day and share it with you guys too and the gym streams are great uh, I do, like I said, I do want to get back into the, the habit of making these gym vlogs, and I'm not exactly sure how I want to use them, I'm not sure how exactly I want to feature them, whether they'll be okay on the main channel. The reason I made a, a second channel for the gym stuff is because I feel like it really confused the YouTube algorithm about what my channel's about, <laughs> because games and gains for me goes well to, really naturally, it goes well really, really well together, and uh, for a lot of you guys it does too, I bet. But in terms of the YouTube algorithm, it kind of freaks it out. So, just just back on our on our rambling uh, gym vlog action, man. Um, hope you guys don't mind. We'll we'll get we'll get back in the rhythm, and we'll see how we want to work it these uh, these gym vlogs into the content. But a lot of what I'm doing right now is just kind of finally deciding to record a little bit in the gym, and finally deciding to hop back on and do some commentary, and see what happens, man. But at this point, these squats are looking pretty good, man. I feel like. I feel like my legs ain't doing too shabby. Gotta keep an eye on them legs, man. You gotta make sure you're making gains somehow. But well, that ain't looking, ain't looking too shabby. And even though I've up until now competed only in physique, I do think that I would like to compete in classic physique next time around. Because I don't think my legs are really a weak area for me. I mean, everything needs to improve. Um, things that I would actually consider to be weak points would be like shoulders, arms, upper back, upper chest. Um, but I feel like the things that are most out of proportion are definitely like my arms and shoulders. I don't think my legs are all that bad. Um, we will continue to keep putting work into them, and I'm excited to see what happens with like a year and a half of bulking with the addition of this particular machine right here, right? The, the quad extension, the hamstring curl. Now, the way that I use this thing is I don't really load up crazy amounts of weight on it. I'm just using it to like burn the heck out of my legs in between sets, right? Just to, just to force activation, force some blood in there. Get them all pumped up and and you know keep the keep the recovery from the squat going in terms of recovering my like core and my back, which like I said I, I think are like the limiting factor for my squats these days. In addition to the cardiovascular limitation, like <laughs> nothing nothing gets me like out of breath and my heart pumping as much as squats. So I'm I'm wondering if as it gets warmer and as it gets nicer outside, if I shouldn't like go run sprints and stuff. Which can inhibit your recovery for squats, you know, it's going to make your your ankles, your knees, your hips, and even probably my lower back, personally, like, take a little extra work from the impact, but I feel like running sprints is not as, like, recovery demanding for me as, like, just, like, doing for, like, a jog, right? And I used to be a distance runner, that, that like, running, running was my jam for a while, so, you know, I definitely, I have that in my uh, sort of athletic repertoire doing the distance running stuff and, I, and sometimes I think about running and that it, like it'd be fun but I think that if I'm gonna use running it should be like explosive training like doing like intervals I've done that before too which is fun and I might want to do that 
Because having being in better cardiovascular shape helps your lifting for sure. Like if you don't get as gassed from doing squats, you can do more squats. But I guess I think that's as like I said, that's about as heavy as I went on squats for this workout. I just go up to 250, do a couple sets of 250, and call it. Now I'm not showing every single set we did for the entire workout, but I did want to give you guys an idea of what we're doing, which is generally the same thing that I've I've done for a long time, which is start light with doing high reps to get warmed up and sort of ladder up, right? You do two or three sets at a certain weight, then you add, you know, like 20, 30 pounds, do another, you know, do another two or three sets, maybe take off a few reps because you're going up in weight, and then you work your way up to some working sets and grind a little bit, you know, at, at a rep ranges that are fun between like, you know, eight and three reps. Once you start getting under eight, like, you know, like the six and fives, that's pretty heavy, but I think that's pretty fun. Work your way up to those sets, hit those sets hard, and then uh, switch it up. So, got done with the squats. Now we're doing some hex bar, straight legged deadlifts. Now, I could do the low bar too, but for whatever reason, I was just doing the high bar this time around. Felt pretty good. It almost gives you like a nice little dead stop, and I feel like it almost brings glutes into it a little bit more, which is important. A lot, there's a lot of power, a lot of power in the glute muscles, man. Helps you. You know, load the squat like I was talking before. Um, get them hamstrings going because a lot of what I'm doing on a, on a squat involves hamstrings, but it's a lot of quads. And I'm pumping the quads the whole time in the beginning with this machine, but then I just swap over to do hamstrings at the end. So I've heard of some people splitting their, their leg day between like, you know, AM quads, PM hamstrings, but I'm not really in a position to be able to train twice a day right now. Usually by the time. Uh, we're done with the, the day, like streaming wise. I usually I'm streaming from around 7 to 8 a.m. in the morning to around 5 p.m. in the evening. And then we get a couple hours with the family in. And then when Archer goes to bed, that's when I can do cardio, but banging around and doing weights is probably not not a good thing. Uh, that might keep him up, and we, we can't have that. That boy's got to get his rest. We can make some gains too. But um, usually just knock out the, the quads and the, and the, I guess, quad focus up in the beginning and then hamstring focus up at the end. And, uh,. I feel like that's okay. I feel like maybe my hamstrings might need more work than my quads sometimes, but honestly, I, I, feel like, I feel like the hamstrings get plenty of love because even though the squat is a sort of quad dominant movement in general, it makes sense to say that. For me and the way that I do them, it feels like there's a lot of hamstring involvement anyway, so we're probably fine. But yeah, we'll grind out a few more sets of, uh, of hex bar work, a few more sets of quad activation, and, I, and keep in mind, I'm still I'm not showing every set, but I am doing calf raises in between every set too right so it's usually like like the three exercise rotation where i would say like the squat and the hex bar stuff are the, are the main movement and then we'll do the hamstring or quad and then calf raise in between to recover so i'm trying to think about what, what my recovery time ends up being it's probably my recovery time is probably about three minutes in between every sort of main working set uh which isn't really required when i do this light but it ends up feeling good, and like I said, it's a lot of it is just sort of keeping me in rhythm for the, with a workout and having fun. But that's pretty much where we're at with my training right now. Like I said, these uh, these gym vlogs are definitely heavy on the on the vlog element of just like you know giving you guys some idea of where I'm at with my with my training and my my headspace as much as the uh, actual physical work we're doing. But I want to get back in the habit of doing these. Editing time is a little bit tight these days. Time is tight in general, but if it's something that I want to work on, you gotta, you gotta do it. So here we are vlogging away. But if you guys enjoy the gym content, be sure to let me know. Like I said, I don't, I don't know how much of this is going to be featured on the uh, main channel. I might, I might give it a try. Do some trial runs of a few workout vids on the main channel again, just for fun. Um, the, the, but the extra channels are just kind of like a fun experiment. I want to see where, where we're at. I always would love to continue to have all my content on the main channel, whether it's, you know, obviously a focus on wow primarily, but with the fitness and even like variety stuff on the main channel would be really, really fun too. It's just strange how the YouTube algorithm works these days. I feel like having, doing multiple uploads and having those multiple uploads per day, I should say, doing multiple uploads per day and having those multiple uploads be like kind of dramatically different content, right? Where World of Warcraft is the main focus and what people mostly want to see. And then I have fitness, and then I have random games too. I feel like what ends up happening is people who aren't interested in one particular type of content won't watch it, and then YouTube will no longer show them any content from my channel, which is kind of tricky. Um, and it's something that I, I gotta decide whether I just wanna push through it, which I've done before, 
or whether I want to divide things up. So if you guys are interested, you can follow me on, on, on the main channel, obviously. If you've been watching this far into the video, you're a champion, by the way. Um, but be sure to subscribe to the Bajira Gains channel. And if you're really feeling zesty, you can check out my also very new channel, the Bajira Bonus channel. I think, I think I have links to both of those. I'm not sure if I have a link to the Bajira Bonus in the uh, description of every video, but it is in my channels section on the main YouTube channel page. So you can support that kind of stuff too. Um, I guess we could, as we're at the end of this video, we could talk about what we're doing with, with uh, the gaming too. Um, we've been going really ham and wow for a bit. We uh, really we, we played Classic quite a bit and then started playing WoW in earnest at the end of Season 3 of BFA and went really ham Season 4 of BFA. Uh, played that a ton, did everything that we had to do to get Rank 1, basically, uh, in terms of like a bunch of PvE, Mythic rating, all that stuff. And we did. We got Rank 1, which is awesome. Such a cool way to finish off BFA. And then Shadowlands has been great so far. I've been playing a ton of that. But Shadowlands is kind of in a position right now where it doesn't really require like constant grind. So we're chilling a little bit with WoW right now. Uh, even doing some variety this past week, which has been a blast. Um, and then we are also looking forward to TBC beta, which is going to be super hype. Uh, that's on the horizon at some point. Looking forward to that. So dabbling in some variety, taking some time, some extra time to chill with the family. Just enjoyed uh, like basically celebrating Jenny's birthday all week, taking it easy. Um, but it feels like we're kind of at a point where we're, we're relaxing a little bit, sort of powering back up, recovering, and getting ready for the next phase of games and gains, which hopefully is just keeping things consistent with the gains, maybe getting a little bit more uh, gym content here on YouTube for you guys. I might honestly even mess around and post this on both channels, on the gains channel and the main channel, see how that goes for us. Um, and then continue to put in work with WoW, but things are going good for us, team. Always, always looking to find ways to improve while continuing the main grind. Keep our head up for new and exciting opportunities. Um, bringing on some pretty cool peeps we're working on with. Uh, just re-signed with Corsair and Origin PC for another two years. Signed on with Whoop for a full year, which is super exciting. Um, definitely be sure to show those sponsors some love for supporting us the way they do. And uh, thanks for tuning in and supporting the, the Games and Gains content team. Uh, just, I guess, other shout-outs. We do have our Games and Gains merch. Got a bunch of new merch as well that we've been working on. So we're, we're doing our thing, man. We're, we're, we're putting in the effort, and hopefully it, it translates into some, some progress as well. But as we'll wrap up the video here with this last little set of hex work, um, be on the lookout for more fitness content here on the channel. You guys know I'm super passionate about these about these gains. We're putting in that work every day. It's just a matter of how do we want to try to share that experience and that process with you in a way that's fun for me and hopefully interesting for you guys too. Um, and if that's the case, make sure you show these videos some love. Leave a nice little comment. Be sure to stay subbed and watch out for these fitness videos coming on every day on the gains channel. And then uh, hopefully maybe a few more on the big Bajira Wow channel as well. But either way, we'll wrap it up here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for showing love. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.